praise the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our Father who art in heaven. He's our keeper, he's our provider. And he gives us a breath of life each day. And we appreciate God, our Father who is in heaven, that he looks after us and we are his image. And we thank God for every opportunity that we have to interact with, your, with his word. And so that our life, every moment, there is some value addition. Value addition from his word. And value addition from the time that we have been interacting, we have been sharing about biblical figures, men and women, that have lived their life despite their pasts, despite their life situations where they have been born. But there is a way God has uplifted them. And so in our episodes of Finding God, we also want to emulate what kind of things that they did in order that we can also be uplifted in our own situations, during our own times. And so I come with a woman, a woman in that something that was unthinkable, something that unimagined, but it happened and God worked in mysterious ways and this woman was a prostitute called Rahab and we find her story in the book of Joshua chapter 2 verse 1 following and you know the story of the Israelites journey from Egypt to the promised land you know whatever happened and everything that was written down, we cannot go back there. We were not there. But it was written for us to pick meaning from what God did for them. The 40 years in the wilderness as they were moving. And here in Joshua chapter 2, Moses was long dead. Joshua was now the leader of God's people into the promised land. But along the way, there were hassles, there were barriers that they had to overcome. And some of them were natural barriers and some of them were human barriers. And now in this stage of their journey, they are reaching, they are progressing and progressing well. But ahead of them, there's something that they have to overcome. And now they are approaching a city called the city of Jericho with huge walls. And actually the Bible talks about the outer wall and the inner wall. And they were wondering how they were going to invade the land. And so Joshua sends people, they are called spies, to go and benchmark how they were going to go in. And the Bible talks about them going and reaching there. But they have nowhere to begin. And what amazes me is they begin somewhere. And where they begin is at a woman's house. The woman called Rahab, the prostitute. And so, this woman welcomes them. And the Bible says actually how her house, her apartment was in the wall and near the entrance. And so when they entered, by God's providence, and I repeat, by God's providence, they entered her house. And she gives them very, very good accommodation and she, ho she becomes so hospitable to them and offers them very valuable information about the city. And so this Rahab, a prostitute number one, number two, meaning that she was a poor woman living in the outer wall of the city. When you read Joshua chapter two, Joshua chapter two verses one following, she was a resident of Jericho. She hid them, the Hebrew spies, and provided them with very valuable information that I've already mentioned. And you know her testimony that she gave them, strengthened them, gave them the strength to know that time is coming when they are owning the land. And when we read verses 8, 9, 10, that is Joshua 2, the Bible says that before the men lay down, she came up to them on the roof. She had, she had given them an, an apartment up. For her, she was staying down. So she came up to them, people, and told them, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us 
and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. And in verse 10, she says, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the kings of the Amorites uh, who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. And as soon as it was heard, our hearts melted. And you can continue reading on. Remember that actually this woman comes to the, pro to the spies in the apartment, says, listen to me, this is what has happened here. And so this prostitute, by God's uh, own making, becomes a very important information to the spies. And so what happened in uh, Joshua chapter 6, following, I mean, chapter 6, verses 1, following, following, you read the fall of the city of Jericho, but she provided a very important information. Therefore, the prostitute was promised survival for herself and her family. And so, meaning that what she did in her crooked way, in her wicked way, she, the life that she had delivered, God had pro providently done something good. He provided for her and she saved herself and her family. Her family, her family, her family. She was saved herself and her family from the collapsing walls. Something that I have treasured in our Finding God episodes. What did she do? How did she do it? And then God does that for her. So Rahab the prostitute gives us some very important lessons. And sometimes, like I've already said in some episodes, that our pasts keep clinging on us. And so someone keeps living in that past life that I was born in this kind of situation that this business that I've been doing is what, you know, I, I must hold there. Listen to me, Rahab gives us an opportunity to learn what God can do for you and what God can do for me. Now, Rahab shows us that God can save someone. Truly, God can save someone with whatever past. I treasured it, I looked at it, I've heard it, I've seen it, that God can save Nobody is beyond repair. Whatever past, no matter what it is, God can deal with it. Now, prostitutes have life to live to. Whatever leads them into prostitution. But when the situations do, and so when you leave, you see people's daughters, people's girls, or young women, or whatever they are, involved in this trade. There are many situations that, but God can reach out to them like he did in this way. And for them, positioning themselves as well, also appeal to them to position themselves to receive God's favor. And so nobody can, nobody's past can hold someone. God can change anybody. So our past is never good enough to earn God's salvation. No. You cannot depend on your past and say that I've been good in the past and therefore I can earn God's salvation. And you depend on the past is good. No, you can. You must continue doing good up to eternity. Nor that our past can be too shocking to keep us out. God can begin a new chapter today. And for Rahab, that's what happens. So all things are possible before God. And so our past should not determine our future. God does things in his own way. And may he do something for you. May he do something for me, every dad, that actually something good comes out of my living. Point number two is that actually God can use someone who has the past, like Rahabu's past. God can use you, whichever past that you have, as long as you position yourself for transformation. Because actually, this woman, this woman is destiny changed. This woman is life changed immediately. She gave this testimony to the spies. Something changed. So God can use anyone as long as we are able to position ourselves. As long as you are able to position yourself. So God used Rahab in a mighty way. Despite her past life that she had. Prostitute. 
very degrading, very degrading trade. Degrading indeed. And look, she comes out in a mighty way and does something that the Israelites leave it to remember. Rahab, she enabled the conquering of the city of Jericho. She gave them the story and that encouraged them to move on. So God shaped the character of the nation and even Rahab herself. And the Bible keeps talking about her as one of those people. Actually, when you read the gospel according to Matthew, she's one of the four ladies that are mentioned in the salvation history. And so Rahab, because of what she did, you know, she's mentioned among those that actually God, God, God used. And the Bible talks about her as the mother to a young man, to a gentleman called Boaz. And Boaz has a story that is very, very, you know, good story to learn. And we shall talk about Boaz as well, because he's one of the Bible characters that has lessons for us to learn. And so, what am I saying in this short time is that allow God to use you despite the past that you may be having. Allow God. Lady, allow God. Gentlemen, allow God to use you despite your past. Just position yourself to begin afresh. Rahab, position yourself to begin afresh. Now, I also position myself to begin afresh from now again to move forward. And then number three that I want to mention is that actually God can redefine, can change your past. We have seen men and women, all the Bible characters that I've talked about, that we are continue talking about, and in finding God, is actually God can redefine our past, can change our past. Rahab the harlot, Rahab the prostitute, to Rahab the mother of Boaz. Can you imagine? from the prostitute to the mother of Boaz. And from Boaz, you read on. And in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, that they talk about the man called Solomon, the, you know, that had his son was Boaz by the woman called Rahab. And connections are that she comes in the lineage. And so they talk about, in this Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, uh, you read about this. It is um, by God's provision, by God's providence, when they're talking about the genealogy of Jesus Christ, she appears, and she's one of those that I mentioned about the women uh, that um, the, Bible, the Bible talks about, the four, uh, one uh, Ruth, uh, Tamar, um, this Rahab herself, and you see, God does great things. So friends, God can redefine, and I'm believing that actually God is going to redefine me, and may he redefine you. May he change your past to become somebody from the fallenness to chosenness fallenness to chosenness okay from a mess that she was you've heard about these things from a mess to a message that we're talking about now from you know you have heard about from grass to grace you know and harlots prostitutes are at the dregs of society i mean they are the lowest you know down there degraded people but god lifted rahab and so we pray that actually God will lift us. And as long as our hearts are positioned Godward, and I know Rahab's heart was positioned Godward. And so from shame to fame, this is something critical, and I'm taking it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that actually you can, God can transform your shame into fame from like Rahab is our is our is our yardstick here. So important that Rahab shows us here is that God saves us who have the past. I have my past. You have your past. God can transform that. And I'm praying that actually God removes the past that is ingrained in my mind, that keeps holding me down, that actually I focus ahead, that actually the past, whether the past of success, whether the past of failure, I know it says, that's in my past, but God can transform it for better usefulness. And God uses those that have the past. Yes, I have my past. You have your past. And so may God use you for his glory. And God redefines us. And how I pray that he keeps redefining us. He restores our fortunes. And God, our Father who is in heaven, looks down upon us and says, yes, my son, 
Yes, my daughter. And so Rahab gives us a challenge, a huge lesson in life. And so, friends, I want to end here by asking you to position your head, I mean, position yourself, Godward, Rahab did, and by divine providence. She was by the way where these spies came and they stayed in her house. She took them upstairs and she is the one that defines the story of conquering Jericho for the Jews. And so friends, may God position you for your family. She saved her family because of what she did for your clan, for your church. You know, may God position you and Rahab gives us a testimony here that may we be positioned to be a blessing to another person, to your family, to your church where you fellowship and your workplace. Rahab made them to pledge, to promise that promise me. And they did promise and she tied a red piece of cloth at her window that when the walls came down crumbling, boom, 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 her house remained standing. And so we pray that during these trying times that our houses will remain standing, that if there will be any house falling, collapsing, or walls coming down, may my house remain standing in the name of Jesus Christ. May your house remain standing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that nothing will affect you because you are serving a living God. May God keep you, may God provide for you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <music>